Hello indie game fans, the Souls-like genre has been exploding in popularity due to the runaway successes of these games, so here's a look at the top 10 3D entries that I'm looking forward to. While bigger studios and games dominate the space, we do have a number of indie titles and games from non-traditional countries that may just stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and in a slight departure from the usual content, I'll be covering some AAA games in this video as well. Let's begin with Deathbound, our first indie title on the list, coming to us from a relatively small team of about 12 from Brazil. The main gimmick appears to be that you're able to absorb the essences of up to 15 dead warriors from 5 different classes and transform between them on the fly, being similar in concept to the recently released Mortal Shell, but without the whole hardening aspect. While it looks like your classic grimdark low fantasy setting, apparently it's a world that rose from the ashes of technological ruins, so just a hint of sci-fi in this, with the expected cults, goddesses, prophecies and so forth being a decent start to the list. A game that showed up at Gamescom in August is Project Relic, an impressive looking Souls-like action title, where, like many of these, the focus is on fighting giant monsters and bosses. I believe this is a team from South Korea that is only about 6 persons strong, and for them to be making a title like this is pretty impressive. This trailer does mainly focus on the boss fights, without any UI elements or even explanation of mechanics, but it does appear to be multiple playable characters and good action. Still, with a game and even developer name with Project in it, this may still be a waste of, but here's looking forward to the future. Our first bigger game on the list is Steel Rising, one that gets a massive amount of props due to the unique setting and designs in another alternate history retelling of the French Revolution. In this timeline, King Louis XVI commands an automata army that he uses to oppress the citizens where you play as an automaton yourself fighting for revolution. It comes to us from developer Spiders who has made a bunch of Honestly, B-tier games like Greedfall and The Technomancer, but people that love those games really, really do, making this a title of interest. For more alternate history French Revolution, watch my video on the best indie games like Final Fantasy Tactics linked above. A title that I've covered before but still looks fantastic is Project Lilith, one of the most polished titles that I've seen and comes to us from what I believe is a relatively small Polish developer. You have been cursed and betrayed by Lilith, now wanting to take your revenge by carving a path to get to her with quite a number of weapons and environmental variety based on this trailer alone. We have everything from giant warhammers to dual wielding giant swords, slaying demons in what looks like pretty satisfying combat. There's the whole equipment, crafting and loot system, as well as something called the Rage system that essentially allows you to use magic attacks, all with a great look which makes this of interest. Grant, blossomed into fortune by hands of 
craftsman. Truly, a beautiful city. But what use is prosperity? Against the impending doom that is the plague. Some of you may be surprised to find Lies of P this high up on the list since the developers just released a cinematic trailer, but I do have to give props where it's due since this takes inspiration from the story of Pinocchio. It's set in an era known as the Golden Age of France, with some of the most horrific and grotesque imagery shown off in this trailer. It does have a similar feel to Steel Rising just covered, and most interestingly, comes to us from a South Korean developer which is pretty huge, so expectations are high and I cannot wait to see some gameplay. Wake up, son. There have been a number of Chinese game developers getting into the mix due to initiatives like Sony's China Hero Project, where Itch of the Abyss Awaken is a Souls-like title from a Chinese developer that is pretty impressive from what I have seen. The art and animation is top notch, and I'm sure that by this point in the trailer, you would have noticed the multiple playable characters, which is where the interesting structure of this comes in. Yes, it's a roguelite souls like, but the developers go out of the way to say handcrafted environments but pieced together in a procedural way but the constant death of a Souls game fits in nicely with the roguelite gameplay loop. Additionally, there does appear to be randomised perks when you level up, as well as multiplayer co-op support for up to 3 players, making this look like a very ambitious title in the space that has potential. Your mission is to go to the mining station in Revion Prime. The entire installation was infested by creatures and who knows what else. One of the long in development Souls like games which recently resurfaced is Dolmen, a game that combines sci fi with cosmic horror, not unlike Hellpoint from 2020. So if that game didn't really do it for you, do keep an eye on this. I love the designs of the monsters in this, giving me a little bit of a Dead Space vibe where the sci-fi melee weapon looks like something out of The Surge, but there does appear to be some awesome customization options Fashion Souls style. Not too sure on the inclusion of ranged weapons, but I suppose that acts like magic in Demon Souls, adding another tool to your belt. Another main mechanic highlighted is Energy Mode we are able to activate various elemental status effects to exploit an enemy's weakness, making this look to have potential. A 
title that I've been keeping a close eye on is Bleak Faith Forsaken, another classically grimdark entry that simply looks fantastic. I covered the Kickstarter campaign of this way back when, where I believe this is from a relatively small team, and all the footage that the developer has shown since that campaign only looks to be getting better and better, where the mechanical dragon-like boss in this trailer looks like a high-fidelity version of the Cleric Beast. Evidently, the game is very grey and brown, for better or worse, depending on how you like your Souls-like games, but what I'm more interested in is the world building and lore. You are exploring an ever-expanding area known as the Omni Structure, where gigantic monsters seem to endlessly circle around this building, adding a hint of Shadow of the Colossus, so who knows what kind of story and lore there will be here. Among the titles on this list, it is still slated for Q4 this year, meaning that we should be able to play very soon. I will see you across the wind's wonder. Chen 唱什么命不由天<笑> A game that absolutely captured the attention of the larger gaming audience when shown off was Black Myth Wukong, a Souls-like title that uses the classic Chinese novel character Sun Wukong or the Monkey King as its main protagonist. It comes to us from quite a large Chinese developer who are not afraid to show off elements of their culture such as the way deities, statues, gods, and even dragons are portrayed in this game. The developer did release quite an extensive gameplay trailer recently, which is worth watching in full, where I've edited it down a little bit for brevity. This uses Unreal Engine 5 as its engine which is very impressive, although I do think that the snow physics in the first boss fight shown off are perhaps not as impressive as something like Frozen Wilds from Horizon or Red Dead Redemption 2.
The boss encounter with the aforementioned dragon is impressive, showing off some of the Monkey King's classic abilities such as being able to change the length and size of the staff or Tinku Pang at will used here to avoid attacks. Super impressive work shown off so far, and I cannot wait for this to be released. And of course, the no-brainer pick for a video like this is Elden Ring, coming from the most prolific developer in the space and is, for good reason, the most hyped Souls-like title. In typical Souls-like fashion, the story does seem obfuscated where you play as something called the Tarnished, having to seek out and build the Elden Ring in order to become an Elden Lord, but details outside of that are scarce and will be uncovered in the game. Nothing by From Software is unintentional, so if you look at the deliberate choice of this not being Dark Souls 4 or Demon Souls 2, and the differences in design of Bloodborne and Sekiro as compared to Dark Souls makes Elden Ring quite an intriguing prospect since people are curious as to what's so different. They will fight, and they will die. In an unending curse. I believe it's an open world title, we are able to summon a horse to ride around which even has a double jump, but the monstrous creatures and gigantic bosses in this world are the highlights as always. Lore videos are always fun and if you have not seen them, there are many frame by frame analysis videos on this trailer on YouTube where it's nice to speculate and get hyped with a community, so if you're into that, I would advise you to seek it out. The Lord, I command thee. Probably enough said about the pedigree at this point, so all that's left is the 4 months or so of waiting until it releases in January, a date that I hope does not slip, and if it manages to deliver, don't be surprised that it will take many Game of the Year awards, taking the number 1 spot. Brandish the Elden Ring. For more grimdark or souls-like titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump. <laughs> 